Hello everyone, welcome back to Steel Force Welding and Forge. Today my friends, I am going to walk you through an unboxing, setup, and demonstration of the SSC Controls finger start button for the Vulcan Pro TIG 205, as well as walk you folks through some upgrades I'm going to be doing on my TIG Torch and my TIG setup. So let's get started. So here is my current setup. This is a number 17 torch with a number 8 cup and a stubby gas lens on it. We're going to take all these off. Now this little gas lens typically gets the job done, however, on larger projects I noticed that it was just getting way too hot. I bought a larger, like a large full size gas lens, but if you're doing aluminum you want a bit of a tighter gas coverage area. So I'm getting something that's a little bit in the middle. So first we take our torch off. You can see here we've got this connection right here. This is what needs to come off. And these are brass threads so we don't need to be animals at all. Just be gentle about all of this. Now we're going to take this little plastic cover off. I'm just going to throw this again in the vise. There we go. Gently take this off. CK Worldwide is kind of the standard when it comes to TIG parts. Can't go wrong. There's the part number for you folks right there. 57Y03RSF. And this is a 25 foot lead. These are pretty expensive. This guy's going to cost you about 80 bucks. However, I need it just to be able to reach everything in my shop. First, we're going to put on this. You don't want to put this on second. Snug. Now there are two little grooves in here to line up with the cover or this brass top. Put that on. Ugh. Thread that back in. Gently tighten. All right, now that's ready to go. Now for the torch head parts. Whenever you're going up to a kind of a larger torch uh, head size, you typically need to get a new insulator. The insulator that we're supposed to need for this one is this number right here, 5N01. This is called an insulator, so you'll call it a heat shield. But this goes on behind your gas lens. So put this here and stand by. Here are the gas lenses that I'm going to be using. <clears throat> so with the way these insulators work is, you put this taper side face down, like so, and you put your gas lens on top of that, tighten this down, just so it's secure, you don't have to go crazy, because you are putting tension on your head here. As long as it forms a firm seal so you won't leak any gas, you're good to go. Now, put our new cup on here. I do like number 10 cups. They give a lot of gas coverage, and as long as you're not in a tight space, they work very well. You put this on, and as you can see, that forms a tight seal. Okay, so now we need a full length collet. Put that guy in. And I actually happen to have a short back cap. So there you go. Now this offers you a lot of nice little options. Some people actually like to hold their TIG cup up here as they TIG weld. You can do that probably for a while, but after a while it's going to get kind of warm. So that is the new head. Now let's go ahead and set up the new button. Now for the button control. Now owning a welder from Harbor Freight does have a few setbacks. One is that there's just not as much technology out there for you as for say a Lincoln or a Miller. So finding a button for this machine was actually kind of challenging. Most of them are either fairly expensive or looked kind of cheap. This one is by the company called SSC controls and now this is specifically designed for the Vulcan welder. You can't just take any um, high freak start button and put it on a Vulcan welder. A Vulcan welder I believe has I want to say six pins? I'm not sure. There's their company logo. Now the really neat thing about this button is that it actually has four different settings. In other words the harder you squeeze it the more power you get. So you, here you can listen one, two, three, four. Hmm. Not sure what that ground's all about. That is different. This jumper must be connected to a welder frame chassis screw. I've never seen a ground like that before on a button. Huh. Okay, well, we're going to make sure we do that. 
So I usually hold my TIG torch about like so. So I don't want that button to be about, about right there. It feels pretty good. Now, this is not interfering with my hand there. Uh, there, it gets in my way a little bit. Good. Good. I think we'll keep that one there. Okay. Snip these off. Then we're going to run this down the entire length of the tube using tie straps. I'm not going to make you guys sit and watch that. Then we'll get it together and we'll do a demonstration. All right. I have the button mounted and the cord zip tied all the way around the new flex hose. And for that ground that they included, I attached it right here onto the frame. I gotta say, they give almost no extra room for that wire there, but uh, it's long enough. Hey, that's a good idea. Turn on your welding hood before you weld. Okay. This metal isn't exactly clean. I did notice a little bit of wavering in that arc. I might just need a little bit more gas. Let's turn that gas up a hair. I do like the button. It is comfortable. It fits well in my hand. Hmm. better ever I really don't feel like that's 130 amps there it is that time I didn't quite get all that porosity out. There, now I should have it. Oh, put a nice bead down, that's for sure. Hmm. Now this button kind of gets hung up on itself. See how it kind of keeps coming up too high like that? I gotta say, that's kind of really getting in the way. You really gotta push that button only there on the tip, otherwise kind of gets hung up on itself. And that time I did kind of taper the power off towards the end. Gosh darn it, that frosty man. Got in there and just kicked my butt. So for that guy, I did kind of taper the heat off towards the end. Let it cool down a little. Doing that uh, by slowly cooling down your puddle at the end of your TIG welds helps you eliminate things like fish eyes. I say this kind of neat being able to vary my power while I'm welding. And there's the taper off. Hmm. Well, so far, I kind of got mixed feelings about this guy. The fact they can just raise straight up like that kind of tends to move over and get hung up on itself. So if you want to use this like a hold it like a pencil like you normally would, kind of gets in the way. I guess if you hold it down there, it's not so bad. And I do, in fact, see the variation in the voltage. I can start out nice and hot, and as I get towards the end, taper off or vice versa. It's got good control. When I push down, it goes on, and when I let go, it comes off. So, so far, I'm pretty happy. I'm still having a trouble with porosity on this setup, and I'm not quite sure why. I got plenty of gas. Should I don't have to 
30 PSI, that is more than enough. Man, that is ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna switch back to my other setup. We gotta figure out what's going on with this setup here. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe that back cap wasn't going in far enough. We'll see. We still have trouble with this. It means one of my connections somewhere, probably my new flex hose, is loose. I'll fix that. Well, I'm not exactly sure what the problem is with uh, that setup, but there's a leak somewhere. So this now is working just fine. For whatever reason, that setup didn't work. There was definitely an argon leak around there somewhere. Right, let's turn that back down. So, I'll go ahead and give my final thoughts on this new setup and on this button. So here are my final thoughts on this new TIG setup as well as this new button. So first to address the porosity issue. After wrapping up this video, I went back to CK Worldwide's uh, website and they there they have several diagrams showing what uh, diffuser you need, what gas lines you need, what TIG cup size you need for your setup. Well, it turns out that this piece right here, also sometimes called an insulator, was a little too big. So for comparison, here's the one I was using and here is the one they recommend. So for whatever reason, this larger insulator right here, it prevented getting a good seal. I went back, I did some more dry passes and then a filler run with this new setup, and now everything is working just fine. Now, as for the flex hose, this is a must. I no longer have that resistance issue when I'm using this torch. This thing just moves freely, no problem. I can wrap this around my neck if I want, um, I can wrap it around my arm. Some guys like to do this, or some guys like to do this while they're welding. And it's no problem. 100% free movement. So I'm very glad I got that flex hose. Highly recommend it. And now, for the button. Overall, I'm happy with it. There is uh, some drawbacks, though, before we get into the positives. One drawback, again, with the way this button tends to kind of open up higher than it kind of should, it tends to kind of rock to the side and get caught on itself and it kind of won't go down all the way without some pressure. I kind of wish that when they designed this they had put in some kind of limiter so it wouldn't raise up too high. Now as far as the different power issues, I'm still kind of getting used to that but I can definitely see that it does in fact work. The just activate with like 20% power and then all the way down to 100%. So it's nice to be able to tail off some of those welds. Um, and cooling them down. This will help burn through on the end of your welds if you're welding through thin material and it kind of helps reduce fish eyes as well. So I see more benefits than drawbacks to this setup. I do recommend it if you have a Vulcan uh, ProTig and you want to have a button. Again, there's not a whole lot of button uh, options out there. This is a good one. Um, I do think though that if I were to drop this guy on something hard, it would probably break. So for the price tag, I believe $130, you gotta be really careful with this new guy. You, know, you drop it once, it broke, it breaks, $130 down the drain, that's not so great. So, thank you for watching today, folks. Please hit that thumbs up, please hit that subscribe button. I just hit over 900 subscriptions, which means we are so close to getting to that 1,000 prescriptions to monetize this channel. Once that happens, uh, the first thing I'll do is buy a microphone, make the audio on these a little bit better. Uh, maybe I'll pay for an actual uh, video editing uh, software so I can make some nicer videos, invest in more lighting. But uh, when I can see that people are actually enjoying these videos and that uh, making more may actually pay off, then absolutely I will invest more money into the quality of my videos. So again, thank you for watching folks and have a great rest of your day.